Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. In this video module, we will be concerned with two sources of market inefficiency, external costs and, and external uh, benefits. You may recall that in our discussion of supply and demand curve analysis, we noted that highly competitive markets will maximize uh, efficiency. Uh, this is in the sense that the output will be uh, maximized given the constraints of supply and demand in the sense that all mutually beneficial trades have been have been exploited, in the sense that all units of a good for which the benefits exceed the costs uh, have been uh, produced and there is no uh, unit produced that for which the, the costs exceed uh, the benefits. We can ex explain uh, market e efficiency uh, in terms of the standard supply and demand curve analysis. We take note of the fact that the points on the demand curve um, represent the additional value of each one of these additional uh, units along the uh, horizontal uh, axis. The supply curve indicates the marginal cost of producing each one of these uh, units. And so we, we can say that um, uh, output is, is maximized uh, given the constraints of supply and demand, that is, uh, these combinations out here are unacceptable to both consumers and producers, uh, as we have indicated in the previous module. Uh, this combination here may be acceptable to uh, producers, but not to consumers. Uh, this combination uh, here uh, may be acceptable to uh, consumers, but not uh, producers. Uh, the maximum output combination, price quantity combination, is is therefore at the intersection of these curves. We can also say that there is maximum efficiency because for this very first unit, the additional value of that first unit is, is way up here on the demand curve. We, we can say P1, that is consumers, I mean P2. Consumers are willing to pay as much as P2 for that unit. In that sense, it's an indication of the additional value of that first uh, unit. The marginal cost of this first unit is way down here. Well, that unit is produced given competitive markets produce all the key one. The additional value is here. The additional cost is here. This gap between P2 and MC1 uh, is the uh, surplus value that is generated from the production and sale of this unit. The same thing is true of the, of the second unit. The additional value is up here, the additional cost is a little higher, but still there is a gap between the marginal value and the marginal cost of production. The moral of the story is that if Q1 units are produced, then you get additional value equal to this triangular area here. Everything is, is and that triangle is as much additional welfare as you can get uh, from trading. Now this uh, efficiency in, in the market occurs because there is a presumption that all costs of production are captured by uh, the supply curve. There is also the presumption that all benefits are captured by uh, the demand curve. Suppose those conditions do not hold. For example, suppose that we have a market in which uh, many of the costs of production are captured by the supply curve, but not all of them. Suppose that uh, producers are able uh, to, um, uh, to pollute, and thereby they're able to uh, uh, impose some of their costs of production on people surrounding uh, their community. Well, that means that this supply curve here understates the true uh, cost. The true cost might, in fact, be, uh, if they were captured by the supply, would mean that the supply curve would be something like, uh, we will mark this uh, S2. Uh, that is to say, that is, we have costs that are incurred by the producers for quantity Q2 equal to this area here, but then we have some pollution costs uh, that is equal to this vertical distance here. This cost, which is defined in economics as external costs, are not captured by the supply curve, hence uh, there can be an inefficiency in, in production. This means that if all costs were in fact reflected in the supply, the, the supply curve and demand curve would intersect at this uh, point here for a price of P2 and a 
the quantity of Q3. As it is, we know that uh, for each one of the units between Q3 and Q1, the additional cost of production for each of these units, the true additional cost of production represented by the S2 curve is up here. The additional benefits are represented by these points on the demand curve. We have an inefficiency in the market here because take this one unit here and I'm going to define it as Q3 plus 1. Take that one unit, Q3 plus 1. The additional cost is up here at point A. The additional value is there. The additional cost exceeds the additional uh, value. There is an inefficiency, a waste of resources there. The same is true for this unit this unit, this unit, all the way up to uh, a Q1. In short, there is an inefficiency in the market equal uh, to this area here. Sure, consumers get this value, but you have to subtract out that to get the true uh, value in the market. One way of, of dealing with external cost is to simply um, impose a tax on the production of the good. If you impose a tax on the production of the good, then indeed uh, you can shift the supply curve that producers uh, uh, consider up to S2. The result will be that the price will go to P2 and the quantity will fall to where it uh, should be, which is uh, Q3. And by the way, in the, with external costs, you have an overproduction, overproduction uh, of, this, of this good and it can be corrected by taxes. It can also be corrected by regulations that require the producers to uh, curb their pollution, which means uh, their costs of production, their realized cost of production go up. 